Hi there, my name is Jordan Tashner, course developer over at Code for Kids, and today I'm super excited to share with you the first teacher video of our brand new drone course, where we introduce our collaboration with Aerobotics, some of the leading drone engineers in the world, and we're going to introduce your students uh, to their own, very own virtual drone, to their own open world where they can fly their drone around, and they're going to be learning about the mechanics and components of a drone along the way. So what you're going to see in front of you on the first tab is another quiz tab. If you don't know what a quiz tab is, don't worry, it's pretty straightforward. You'll see in front of you that there's a number of questions. And if you get those questions correct, um, after going through them with your student, uh, you'll get either a tick or an incorrect uh, answer will show up. But I'll show you exactly how that works now. So the first, uh, the first question here is an information question. It says, what is a drone? And remember this little icon over here basically just means it's a teacher prompt. So as a teacher, you can say to all of your students, what is a drone? And it's a very collaborative, so students can put up their hands, they can give their own answers. But essentially the answer to this question is inside this video. And you'll see in this video where we've uh, spoken to the actual aerobotics engineers, they will explain exactly what a drone is, how it works, what aerobotics uses drones for, uh, from their side of things. So the answer to what is a drone is you'll see it's basically just a rotor-based copter, so essentially a mini helicopter. Let's see what your students say. I'm not going to go through this video, but I do very much encourage you um, as a class, put some speakers on, uh, go through the video together, listen carefully to what the aerobotics engineers say, and you'll see that the questions below on this quiz tab, uh, on this first tab, are going to be related to this video. Um, if in the case that you do not have speakers and you cannot watch uh, the video, that's fine. I'll show you exactly how we can avoid any issues and your students can still get the correct answers. So the first proper question, you'll see um, how drones fly and you'll see this button that says expand text. And if you click expand text, you'll see that it just shows some uh, an excerpt from the video uh, where one of the engineers, Josh over here has says uh, in the video, in this case, we have a quadcopter quad because there are four rotors. Others may have six or even eight rotors. So this is essentially the answer from the video in the case that you have not watched the video. Uh, these are disabled by default, so your students won't see this unless they click on expand text. So the answer to this, how many rotors should a drone have? The answer that you saw there was four or eight. If you get the correct answer, you'll see a nice confetti animation and it's going to highlight green. You can go to the next section. The lighter the better. Why are drones light? Again, you'll see this uh, if, if you haven't seen the video, you'll see this over here. When we have this frame, this big white part over here, this is the body of the drone and it's important as, um, that it's as light as possible so the drone can be as energy efficient. Okay, so energy efficient, battery efficient, same thing. So the correct answer is there. Okay. Then we have the brain of the drone. Okay, the answer here, I'm not going to go through this, but it's basically B and D moves the drone, tells the drone what to do. So the brain of the drone controls all the other components of the drone. Okay, and then controlling drones. Okay, what does RC mean? Obviously the, the answer here is remote controller. Okay, and then finally, aerobotics and drones. So I have not mentioned this already, but aerobotics basically uses drones to help farmers, whether it's collecting data about the fruit that the farmers are growing or um, whether or not there's uh, disease crops in their fields or if they're ready to be harvested, um, or if they just need to count the number of trees uh, in the fields and things. This is what aerobotics uses drones for because drones just fly over the farms and they scan all the trees. So what do aerobotics use drones for? Again, this is in the video. The answer here is to aid farmers, okay? If your students are feeling upset, if they've got any of the wrong answers over here, there is a, bot a button at the bottom of the page that says reset answers. So they can just click that and you'll see that all the answers are reset. This is extremely useful for progress tracking as well. So if you wanna um, make this first tab out of marks or whatever, you can just simply count the number of ticks that they have on each page. Now the second uh, tab at the top, my drone, this is where we're going to introduce uh, the first uh, interactive drone application to your students. And it's going to be where your students can make their own drone. So they can customize their own drone, they can express themselves, they can change colors of the drone, they can name them. Uh, and you'll see what I mean by that now. So first, creating your own drone is another teacher prompt. Why are drones useful? So drones help humans do things uh, more fast, more efficiently, uh, whether it's filming things, uh, whether it's ga gathering data, collecting packages or delivering packages, um, drones can do, do a lot of things. But again, in aerobotics case, they help farmers. So let's make our own drone. 
And now you're gonna see the first app over here. So in this first one, all we're asking your students to do is change the name of your drone. Okay, so at the moment, let me just explain uh, what this app looks like, how it works. On the left hand side, you will see this block based interfa uh, coding interface. Okay, if you've seen Scratch before, um, this is Google's equivalent. It's called Blockly. And in Blockly, you can click and drag blocks around like this. Okay, you'll see this block says when flag is pressed. Okay, the flag is the run button. So when your, uh, the user or student clicks the run button, code will execute. There's nothing connected to this block for now. What we wanted them to do for the very first one here is change the name of that 3D text over there. So you would click on the drone tab over here and you would say change, um, change drone name to something and the color to something else. Okay, and what we do is we click and drag this block and we connect it to the other block. There'll be a little sound, a little clicking sound that means the blocks are connected. And now when you click the run button, all the code inside, uh, underneath that, that first block will be executed as long as it's connected. Uh, to that first block. So it's connected when you can move them both around like this. So the drone name can be anything creative, anything your students want to do for their first one. I'll just change this to, to my drone, okay? And you can also change the color of the 3D text. Okay, so let's change it to like blue, for example. And now to execute this code, we just click run. And you can see, blue is a little bit hard to see, maybe we'll change it, let's just change it to red. You'll see that the 3D text over here has changed. Now on the right hand side, we have our 3D drone and you can left click and hold to, to rotate the camera around the drone. If you right click and hold, you can pan around if you want to move the camera around. You can also use the, the, scroll, the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out if you want to get closer, have a closer look at your drone. And the 3D text, you can also click and drag to move it around. Okay, so for this first one, I'm going to put my my drone text up there, I'm gonna go there, maybe I can take a screenshot or whatever, but that's the first, That's it for the first one. For the second one, we now wanna teach uh, your students how to change color, okay? And we can change the color of every single one of these components you can see of the drone. We can change the color of the frame, one of the rotors, any of the rotor blades. So for this one, I'm gonna change the frame, that big orange part in the middle, and I'm gonna change it to black, for example, and I can click run and you can see the color has now changed, okay? You can also change uh, a different component. Say I wanna change one of the rotors. Um, this is quite cool. You can string together as many blocks as you want, as long as they're connected like so. I'll change rotor A and I'll change rotor D. Let's make one of them pink and the other one, uh, I was orange before, let's make the other one yellow. And there we go. Okay, so your students can have a lot of fun with this. They can change as many colors as they want. Just make sure they don't spend too much time on these because I know students will be quite excited to see uh, their very own drone come about. So just make sure they've changed a few colors and as long as you can see that, that's perfectly fine. Lastly, uh, this is just more of an open sandbox question so they can do whatever they want. They can make their own drone, they can change any colors. Uh, but I'll show you just some of what the other blocks do. So let's change the scale, scale's a new one. If I wanna make the frame in the middle slightly bigger, I can say let's change the frame to 125%. We can click run and you can see the frame has gotten a lot bigger. If I want it to be smaller, I can change it to 75% and you can see that it's a lot smaller over there. Okay, uh, and there's also a, a block that they can play around with. This is gonna be more or less in two, but if they want to, they can. You can actually disable and enable some of these rotors and you'll see how the drone will tilt um, according to, to what you've enabled and disabled. So if I enable, uh, sorry, if I disable rotor C and click run, you'll see that rotor has stopped moving and the drone is tilting that way because these three rotors are on. But uh, you can disable other ones and you'll see how the drone reacts. See, it's tilting to the left now because these two drones are, uh, rotors are off. And you can play around, your students can play around with that. Again, they mustn't spend too much time um, because there are some more important things to get to. So now onto the first proper open world tab. So this is where they have their own drone. It's an open world, they can explore. You can see some nice pretty colors, some uh, orchards. We've got uh, the aerobotics truck over there with a little drone, a little person down there. Um, and you'll see this whole new interface. So let me just explain how it works. So in the middle of the screen on the right hand side, you have your drone and your drone is hovering around in the open world. And below you can see that there's a bunch of hexagons and the blue hexagon is the hexagon that the drone is currently on. So right now it's just hovering. And on the left hand side, we have that familiar uh, Blockly interface. 
with a bunch of new blocks on how the drone is going to be moving around this open world. We start off very simple. In the top left corner, we can see our objectives. There's only one objective, and the objective is get to and hover over the goal tile. So the goal tile is the green tile on, in the open world. Um, it's the one with the flag, just so you can see a bit more clearly. And the answer to this is very simple. So we need to just move our drone forward. Um, and you'll see that there's, uh, that it's about two hexagons. And every meter, one meter correlates to one hexagon. So we just need to move to two hexagons or two meters in this case. So what we can do is when the flag is pressed, we want to move our drone forwards a distance of one meters. If you click that twice, see it's moved forward, it's moved forward again. And there we go, the objective is complete. You've got to the goal tile, well done, that's it. If something goes wrong, if your student breaks something, they can just reset. If your student goes off the side of the, um, of the map, if you just click run again, you can see it's going off the map. The drone will just bounce back automatically. So uh, if things go wrong, if uh, someone tries to go off the map, it'll just bounce back and it won't, won't break at all. Um, if you want to move backwards, you can. If you want to move upwards, you can. If you want to move downwards, you can. You can do anything you want. Uh, but that's it for the first tab. Very straightforward. Okay. If you also, there's also a sound button. If you want some sound, you can enable that. That's disabled by default. And again, as I said, you can reset if something goes wrong. Next, we have uh, the last tab for this lesson. Also very, very straightforward. All we need to do is um, get to and land on the goal tile exactly the same as before, but now we actually need to land, okay? So we can go like that, run, run, and then we can land. Just be careful about having leaving that block there. We just need to land like that. And there we go. Now I can show you some alternative ways of completing the same, the same uh, tab. We can also do it all in one go. We can move the drone two meters forward instead of one, and then we can land. That's all in one go. If you click run, you'll see that'll complete the objective. There we go. We can also, um, for example, oh, oh, this is another way of, of controlling the blocks. If you don't, if, if you don't want to use the flag, you don't have to, you can also just simply click these buttons and it'll work as well. So if you have two separate buttons that aren't even connected, okay, you can simply just click these and it'll also work without the flag. But we encourage you to use the flag for now. Uh, it gets a little bit more advanced if you just click it. But you can click it like that and then you can just click land and it'll still work the same. Now let me just give you an example of how uh, a student can break, a student can break the app. Now if, for example, you spin the drone left, uh, let's say 120 degrees, and then we move the drone uh, three meters or so. So let's spin the drone, let's move three meters. You'll see that it's gonna bounce back again, as I said earlier, if, you're, if the drone tries to go off the map. If it breaks completely, which can happen sometime, you can see it's happening there, you can just reset and everything will go back to normal. Okay, and that's it for lesson one. We really, really hope you enjoyed. Um, as I said, students will get quite excited about this, so don't, don't spend too much time on the other tabs. And that's it. I'll see you in lesson two.